Hello friends and welcome to another day of crochet and crime. My name is Hazy Baby and today is the 9th of May 2023 and I will be talking to you guys about crime while I crochet like I do every day. Uh, this is Lillian and as you can see she grew overnight. I'm just absolutely loving this wing in it stitch. I just think it's so fantastic. Um, if you would like to order a blanket like Lillian, you can do that. Just inbox me. Um, I'm also opening up an Etsy store this week and I'm going to be making some bags and some t-shirts and some really cool stuff. So keep an eye out for the um, link. I shall put it in my bio. Um, and if you would like a chance to win a blanket, I am giving a giveaway. Once I have 1,000 subscribers, I am giving away Raymond. This is Raymond. I haven't finished making Raymond yet, but this is him. And once he has finished being made, you can go into a chance to win him if you're one of my first 1,000 subscribers. So if you're not yet subscribed, please do. Alrighty, so without further ado, oh, by the way, you also have to comment on the videos um, because I need to be able to write everybody's names down and it just makes it easier for me. So comment on the video, subscribe, not to uh, my TikTok. I mean, you can if you want to. I mean, that would be greatly appreciated, but I actually mean subscribe to my um, YouTube page. Alrighty, that was me deciding what color I wanted first. I think this needs some more glitter in it. And let's get started with our first story today. So, guns have been allegedly seized over a Queensland uh, raid. So, several guns have been seed, seized after a four-hour siege in Queensland. Hence the seizure of the seized drugs. Nope. Guns. Okay, an emergency declaration was made by... Um, made at Donnybrook north of Brisbane about 6.44 a.m. with boundaries established on Ann Street, Maud Street and Fisherman Drive, Alice Street and Mary Street. So they just did the whole block by the sounds of it. You know, which is, which is fair. They always thought there was guns. Uh, police were called to an address with, within the exclusion zone about an hour earlier with specialist police negotiating with the man inside the property. So uh, negotiations eventually talked the man into surrendering without incident after about four hours. So he was like very upset his spaghetti apparently. Um, yeah, so during the incident, a male person is alleged to have produced a firearm and behave in a threatening manner to his partner. Uh, and several guns were seized after the surrender, police have said. So that was a nice quick one, first thing this morning. And that person has been arrested. There was quite a few police officers. Like I said, they did an exclusion zone of an, a whole block, basically. Uh, it looks like about 50 houses were in that block. So, yeah, that's a pretty big seizure. That's a pretty big expense. Alrighty, so a teen is in hospital after being struck by a car at a hooning event in Queensland. So two police officers and a teenager were injured in two separate hooning events in Queensland last night. So hooning, if you don't know, is just where literally a bunch of children, I mean adults, uh, get together and um, yeah, they hoon. They show off their cars, and it's kind of like Fast and the Furious, but for, like, povos, basically. Yeah, come on, come at me. So, an illegal hooning meet at Swanbank in Ipswich, uh, west of Brisbane, and a teenage bystander was hit by a car that spun out of control. He's actually in serious uh, condition in hospital. I apologise for the dog barking. It's actually not one of mine for once. It's uh, my neighbour's dog I think they're being left alone for the first time in a, in a while. Um, my neighbours are new neighbours. They're a military family, same as us. And I think they um, just moved in and I think she just started working. So the dog is outside and he is not happy about it. He's an old dog. so. And today for the first time in like North Queensland, it's actually cold. Like it's 10 degrees, which is not that cold. But... Um, Everybody, I mean, it's like 15 now, 10 last night. 
Everyone's walking around in short shorts and jumpers. It's absolutely hilarious because uh, they're trying to pretend that that's cold. But okay. So like I said, that boy is in a serious condition. Um, at the same time, two police officers were allegedly assaulted and injured by another group during the Hooning crackdown on the Gold Coast. So officers were hit with rocks and bricks uh, by a large group of people wearing balaclavas on Christine Avenue at Rabina at about 6.30 p.m. So police said that they are using facial recognition identity analysis programs to identify the criminals and their cars. So CCTV footage, I'd say, and also like cam footage from the Hooning event because Hoons aren't the brightest crowns and they probably recorded the entire thing. No doubt. So the two officers in the vehicle are have sustained glass fragment injuries because someone busted a window in uh, and one has glass in their eye and they've been transported to the QAS hospital. Chris Tritton from the Queensland Police had said this. So these uh, kinds of acts of violence towards police won't be tolerated towards any emergency services and will they'll be continuing to gather their evidence, analyse faces and also vehicles and make a swift response in the coming days. So a marked police van was also damaged during the assault. Before the incident, police had located about 100 hoons with their cars. Now the name for them is Revheads. Um, police said the group quickly dispersed, fleeing into surrounding streets before several people were detained. A 20-year-old uh, boondle man has been charged with two counts of serious assault. Um, one count of willful damage of a commissioner's property. Uh, and other people were also arrested but later released by police. Police will be conducting um, a hooning and antisocial behaviour check over the next couple of days. So watch out if you were part of that group. I hope they catch them all because seriously, we've got better things to worry about besides idiots almost getting themselves killed. Morons, just completely silly duffers. I really love this stitch today. And I think Lillian is full of this stitch. Kind of looks a bit mermaidy, a bit fishy. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. And I think my mum, who is the person who purchased this blanket, will absolutely adore this. And yes, I'm aware that that, that purple kind of looks a bit pink on camera. It's not as pink as it looks on the camera. And let's move on to our next story, shall we? Okie dokie, artichokey. So this next one is a really, really interesting one. Um, I was listening to it on the radio yesterday. I was super keen to talk about it yesterday. But I was just waiting for more information about it because I didn't want to, like, just start um, halfway through. And since so many other people were also covering it and it was all over TikTok and social media, I just thought I would wait a day or two. Um, I ended up only waiting a day <laughs> to see what it was about. So an anti-crime protest happened in Rockhampton and started like a vigilante mob. So a bizarre scene erupted in Rockhampton as some residents took the youth crime crisis into their own hands in like following a rally. Police found themselves outnumbered by a group of apparently bent... Um, Vigilantes bent on revenge. Um, oops, hold on. Oopsie daisies. I'm going to go one, yeah, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. I'll leave two. Two either side. Yeah, that's looking cute. Oh, I like the sparkle in that. I don't know if you guys can see it. You see the sparkle? So pretty. So pretty. Such a pretty sparkle. Such a pretty sparkle. 
Okay, so local Mai Tai gym owner Torrin O'Brien had previously posted a $5,000 reward on social media for information on youths believed to have robbed uh, a home in town. So today he rallied, so yesterday he rallied alongside a crowd of anti-crime protesters in Central Park um, in Rockhampton. Some of those who attended the um, protest spilled onto the streets to hammer on the doors of those they believed to be responsible. Um, Police (laughs) blockaded the crowd, but they were outnumbered by protesters, basically. Uh, Mobile phone footage shows the tense situation unfolding, and if you want to just Google it, go have a little wee gander of it. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah. Look, youths won't, youths won't do your jobs properly. It's civilians doing your jobs for you. One protester was heard saying, oh yeah, I can't even say you correctly. It said yous. We're not a bunch of sheep, love. Um, others called for police to stand with the protesters and push the le- uh, for legislation, legislative change. Police Minister Mark Ryan has asked Police Commissioner Katuna um, Carol for a briefing. So basically, it's the age old thing that I was talking about the other day, where we have a lot of youth crime problems here in Queensland. Um, actually, we have a lot of youth pri- crime problems all over Australia, but mostly Queensland seems to be the heavier state for it. Um, and everybody always just is out for blood. And I honestly believe that that's not going to solve anything. And I think this uh, gym owner, the Muay Thai gym owner, is an idiot for posting a reward of $5,000 because you're going to have all the crazies in the woodworks coming out thinking that they're doing the right and just thing and all wanting to claim that $5,000. Just so stupid. Um, I don't think harassing an entire family of people you believe have done the crime, like you don't even know, you don't even have, where's your proof? and their children um, is absolutely ridiculous. So um, nothing became of anything, and it was just a waste of everybody's time and a waste of taxpayers' money dealing with bullshit. So well done, idiots. I hope you got your way. And yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to get backlash for that comment. I'm probably going to get a lot of people who are like, meh. No, I get it. You're upsetting spaghetti because someone stole your stuff. I get it. It's very upsetting. Um, But we do need to tackle youth crime 100%. But continuing down the same path and asking for harsher and harsher legislation is not going to work. Because if it worked, it would have worked already. But anyway. But anyway, let me move right along to a new story, shall I? Just give me a wee second as I finish up this little cluster of deliciousness. Oh, look at it, guys. It's getting so pretty. I love that sparkly shine. Alrighty. So, men in black hoodies have seen, um, were seen after shots were fired into a Sydney house and car. There's a lot of firing and shooting and stuff happening at the moment. So, three men wearing black hoodies were spotted uh, shortly after five shots were fired into a home and car in Sydney's west overnight. So... Let me read to you about that. So two men aged 22 and 30 were inside the home on Mirror Way in um, Bidwell at about 2.05 when three shots were allegedly fired into, but no one was injured, thank goodness. Um, After two shots were also fired into a car in the home's driveway. Is that what I did on the other side? Yes. You know, anyone else get silly TikTok songs stuck in their head? I've got, um, hi, I'm from outer space. I got Milky Way for blood. I got evolution in my veins. Uh, The reason why I kept pausing was because I made up my own (laughs) version of that. And so I was just trying to remember the actual lyrics and not my ones. By the way, my ones were, 
Uh, boop. No. Hey, I'm from outer space. I got Milky Way for blood. I got demons in my veins. Oh, <laughs> apparently. I'm here for a long time. Okay, moving on. Back to the story. Back to the story then. So police have established a crime scene at the home as they investigated the shooting. Three unknown men wearing black hoodies were seen in the area and a black Holden Commodore was seen driving away shortly after the shots were heard. So anyone with any information on the incident who may have seen the men or the occupants in the vehicle are uh, urged to contact police. Please. Um, yeah. To give them the information that you do have. That thus does have. Okie dokie, artichokey. Let's move on to our next little slice of news today. A little slice of crime. A little bit of a crime wave that's happening at the moment. What am I? Who am I kidding? At the moment, there's always a crime wave happening. Okay, so men charged after two alleged violent road rage attacks in Queensland. So, like, there's been some, like I said, lately, there has been some serious road raging happening. People be, like, upset his spaghetti for apparently no reason. Just changing my chair. Oof. I'm on me, I'm on me bouncy ball. I'm in me mom's car. Broom, broom. Get out my car. Aww. So, yeah. <clears throat> a man's been charged after he went on a little bit of a upset his spaghetti rampage. So an alleged culprit of two violent road rage attacks in Queensland, um, in Queensland's southeast, has been charged with the car. Sorry, has been charged, but the car. I was say, what have been charged with the car? Has been charged, but the car involved remains missing. So, police allege a Toyota Land Cruiser intentionally rammed into the rear of a yellow Ford Focus on the Logan Motorway at Drewvale on April 25th. So, the driver allegedly fired an air rifle towards the poli- towards the people in the Ford Focus. Injuring a 14-year-old girl sitting in the back seat. Oh, my God. People be crazy. People have lost their tiny minds. Jesus. Jeepers Louises. She suffered a minor leg injury. Then a few days later, police alleged the same Toyota Land Cruiser ran into the rear of a Ford Focus in Brown's Plains before fleeing the scene. What's its problem with Ford Focuses? It's believed that the driver mistakenly thought it was the Ford Focus from April 25th incident. What's he doing stalking people? Crazy. After reports were made to Crime Stoppers, police used that information to find the man in his Regent's Park home yesterday. How did they find him? What? what does he, was he going around bragging about it? Jeepers Louises. Bragging about shooting a 14-year-old girl. Like, what a jerkwad. I mean, maybe he didn't know. But still, that's not that's not a good enough... You know what I mean. Anyway, so he was taken into custody, but when police searched his home, they found three guns, including a shortened handgun... Shotgun, sorry. The 30-year-old man was charged with two counts of dangerous operation of a car, disqualified driving, and failing to provide details at a traffic crash. He also was charged with discharging a weapon in a public place, carrying a loaded weapon, and wounding someone. He was refused bail and will appear via video link in the in the Richlands Magistrate Court today. The matter was adjourned and um, the accused remains in custody until he next faces court in August. So the investigation is not yet over and police have not located the Toyota Cruiser at the centre of the alleged crimes. Officers has asked members of the public and his family for information about the car and to contact them if you have any information about this douche canoe's car and really anything that will enlighten them, basically. So a woman is accused of murdering her children and stuffed them into a suitcase in New Zealand, pushes to keep her name secret. And one, two, three, four, five. 
while I um, can see why um, people would be like, no, we need to know her name, I actually feel like the victims are more important than the perpetrator. So f knowing her name is kind of pointless. Um, she knows what she did. We don't need to know her name. In fact, I think forgetting that she even exists as a human being is probably the worst punishment anyone could ever have. So a South Korean woman charged after the bodies of two children were found in suitcases in New Zealand is continuing to uh, have her name kept a secret. So she really badly wants her name to be kept a secret. Last week, the woman appeared briefly in New Zealand's High Court where she said um, she's going to prove that she's innocent, apparently, as she was led back to her cells. The woman, the children's mother, was early um, extradited from South Korea after an international hunt. Because she's a rhymes with hunt. Starts with a k. Um, she has pled not guilty to two charges of murder and is set to go back on trial in Auckland um, in 2024. So back in March, Justice Anne um, Hilton refused to grant the woman a continual name suppression. Uh, today, the Court of Appeal, her lawyer, Chris Wilkinson-Smith, submitted the application for a continued suppression. Uh, and it was once again made on the basis of extreme hardship and said that publication would endanger the woman's safety. Of course it would. Um, I just feel that perhaps her safety is not important to us, the public. Um, but I suppose we're supposed to say that they're innocent until proven guilty. Um, but when it comes to children, I'm I'm always saying that, you know, you're guilty until proven innocent, as far as I'm concerned. But what would I know? Um, hold on, how many did I do? Two from the end and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two from the end and then here. One, two. So... Uh, Wilkins Smith said that Justice Hilton failed to put proper weight into the health reports when refusing to grant continuing suppression. However, Prosecutor Gareth Kayes um, opposed the name suppression and said that the health report was taken in the highest by Justice Hilton. In her judgment, Justice Hilton said test was whether um, there was a real or an appreciable possibility of an involved or increased risk to the defendant. Uh, while it sounds harsh, that's a relevant test, she ruled. I have not provided the evidence showing that the defendant would likely to severely um, be affected by the publication of her name and that would her safety would be endangered. So Ty Tania Gosling acted on behalf of stuff and opposed a uh, continuous suppression. So Justice Miller, Justice Woodford, and Justice Helen Cole reserved the decision. Uh, the children were discovered by members of the public who bought the contents of a storage locker in an auction. They were not aware that the uh, children's bodies were inside. So it was one of those um, auctions where, I think you guys have seen it, there where uh, people who don't pay their bills, the storage lockers one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, go up for sale. Um, and the contents is sold. And they don't really look through the contents, the, like the people who own the um, storage people. They just literally sell them as is. People don't even go in there to have a look. So... It was during one of these auctions that someone had bought the shipping container or the storage locker, if you will, and uh, that is where they discovered the children's body. Um, the children's bodies were inside some suitcases. 
But they took the suitcases home first. So they opened the suitcases up and they found these children's bodies inside them. So I know my voice went quiet then, but that's just because this is sad and deserves the kind of respect that a quiet voice is able to provide. Um, so they were not aware that there was children's bodies inside, obviously, when they brought the suitcases home and when they bought the locker. So a strict suspend, um, suppression orders prevent media from revealing the children's identities, which is really sad. So those orders were made by the coroner following an application from the members of the, fam the wider family. Okay, that makes sense. Especially if they're Korean, they might be quite um, conservative and it might be against their religion as well. So the woman was arrested at the southern port city of South Korea in September based on domestic court warrant issued after New Zealand requested her provisional arrest. So basically what she'd done is she had, they allege, I must say that they, they allege, I don't have the information and she hasn't been convicted yet. They allege that she um, murdered her children <clears throat> and then fled back to Korea and I disposed of her body, the baby, the baby's bodies in um, a like a storage shipping container on a piece of property and then didn't pay for the storage of said shipping container. Uh, perhaps she wanted them to be found. I don't know. Uh, so she was born in South Korea and she later moved to New Zealand and uh, gained membership, citizenship in New Zealand. Um, immigration records show that she fled to South Korea in 2018. One, two, three, four, and five. Doesn't she sound like a keeper, guys? Doesn't she just sound like the best mum ever? Not. So I don't have any more information on that one, unfortunately, because uh, it is still an evolving chapter. And since her name is still suppressed, I can't look up any information regarding the case. So I apologize. Uh, but I will try and keep you guys up to date. Speaking of which, uh, this next story is an update on Jared Haynes. So Jared Haynes is the rapist. Yes, he is. Uh, he was some sort of stupid sports celebrity. I say stupid because it annoys me. Um, who performed cunnilingus on a woman at a party. Uh, an unconscious woman at a party. That's what he's been convicted of. And when she started to bleed, he caught a cab home. Um, he stopped when she started to bleed and caught a cab home. So he is claiming it was consensual. She obviously is claiming it was not because unconscious people can't consent. So um, this update is he was convicted and he appealed it and then he was reconvicted. He's anyway, he's been trialed like three times. In the end, he's been found guilty um, over Easter I'm just giving you guys a recap. Over Easter, he tried to uh, ask to be uh, kept with his family because his poor wife was living off their savings. I mean, come on, rich people problems. Um, and I was all like, get a job, boosh. Yeah, I'm not understanding of people who stay with rapists, just saying. Um, anyway, but he is always in the media because he is a somewhat celebrity, Jared Haynes. And, um, yeah, I feel so sorry for this victim because she is continuing to be dragged through the mud and continue. It's just never ending for this poor woman. And so that's what this story is about today. So that's what this update is. So... The woman Jared Haynes sexually assaulted says that she's living in a never-ending nightmare almost five years later as he awaits for his jail sentencing. So he hasn't actually been sentenced yet, which is absolutely redonkulous. So the 35-year-old disgraced former NRL star 
uh, will be sentenced on Friday after being found guilty of two counts of sexual intercourse without consent following the uh, third trial in April. Crown Prosecutor John Sanafis read a victim impact statement on Monday from the woman who cannot be identified, thank God, as lawyers have made submissions ahead of his sentencing. Um, that's when anonymity needs to be a thing. I mean, she's, yeah, she's the victim. We need to just stop it. Stop it. Um, she says that her life has been launched into what feels like a never-ending nightmare. It's almost five years since the assault, um, and some think she has been unable to move from and feel a sense of peace about. Not that she'll ever feel a sense of peace. I'm sorry, darling, but if you're waiting to feel peace, it will never come. Um, well, at least for this victim of sexual assault, it didn't. And you still live through it. I mean, 30-something years later and I'm still still rocking backwards and forwards and having nightmares. So I'd like to say that it goes away. It doesn't. It doesn't go away. Um, Haynes appeared, but, uh, like, she doesn't deserve to have it thrown in her face every single time she picks up a newspaper or listens to a radio station or whatever. Like, let's just, like, how about we just forget this prick and then... We don't have to give him any more voice. And the only reason why I'm continuing to read this case right now is because actually it says something about her and so I'm, I care about her. I don't care about this Haynes fuckwit, but I do care about the victim. So um, the packed courtroom of prison greens was sitting in the dock opposite the supporters. I can't believe he still has fucking supporters. Who were asked to sit in the jury box due to capacity restrictions. Uh, Haynes almost spent an hour in the woman's home on the night of the 2018 NRL Grand Final and only assaulted her for 30 seconds. I like how this this says only, only 30 seconds, only 30 seconds. Why the word only? Why did you have to say only? He assaulted her for 30 seconds. I'm going to assault you for 30 seconds, person who wrote this, and see how you feel about the word only after that using his hands and his mouth only fuck's sake oh i'm so salty right now look words have meaning words are important you can't just be throwing words around like only when it comes to sexual assault shove your only as far as it'll fucking fit honestly only jesus i'm so salty and i have to go to work after this guys they're going to be looking at me like, oh, why is Hazy in such a mood today? <laughs> All right. I'm actually going to move on from this story because I'm so salty about that word only that I, I can't I can't move past it. I don't know. You guys are going to be like, it's only a word. I know it's only a word, but I don't like it. I don't like it. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, and eight. <sighs> Alrighty. So today this one is going to be a little bit of a short video. I'm going to do it in two parts because I have to go to work in between. I have several jobs and one of them is I am a tutor for a special uh, for a special, for a uh, university. I used to be a special needs worker, a high needs special needs worker. But now I am a tutor for a university um, and that is my stable income. And by stable, I mean I'm lucky if I can get eight hours a week. And this passion, this crochet and crime is my love and at the moment, she ain't making me much money. So um, she's making me no money. I'm not getting any money from this. But I do plan on making it into a business of mine. Um, and so I really hope to get your support. Uh, so if you could subscribe, that would be fantastic. If you could share this page out, that would be even better. And if you could encourage other people to share it and subscribe, I would just love you long time. I would love you forever and ever. 
So because I have to go to a day job after this, I have decided instead of uploading really, really late like I did last night, I'm going to upload half of my video this morning and then upload the other half this afternoon if I get time. At the moment, like I said, this is just a little short video um, and I'm just doing the one round of crochet this time. So let's move on to our next story. I have seven minutes. I've got seven minutes until I have to start getting seriously dressed for work. Actually, I have less than that and I am wasting time by chatting. So a man allegedly killed his girlfriend and dumped her body in a bin. Nice, isn't it? Isn't it? So this is going to be the last one for today. So however long it takes, um, it looks like it's going to be a short one. So after murdering his girlfriend of a month, Jun Shang Tan allegedly dumped her body in a wheelie bin and watched as the garbage truck collected her remains, a jury has been told. So Kelly Yang Zhang um, was last seen alive by her eight-year-old son while wearing a pink nightgown watching something on her laptop on her bed. Uh, they just had dinner, lamb chops and chicken soup, and Zhang had saved a plate for a man named Eric, who she'd been seeing after connecting on WeChat. Okay, I don't know what WeChat is, and I'm going to have to look that up in a minute. I think it must be in some sort of a dating app. Anyway, she told her friend that she liked that man better than Zhang Sing Tang, who she'd met online about a month earlier. So she was looking for love, and she was looking for it, hopefully, in all the right places, but clearly not. Anyway, he was at her house that night and shared dinner with her and her son. But while she'd reportedly, um, you know, soured on the relationship, she, he was keen on her and referred to her as his quote unquote wife in conversations. Creepy alarm bells are ringing to his friends. Um, so juries in his murder trial have been told that he was pretty much psycho crazy. Risk a say, ba, 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 ba. like seriously, who calls someone they just met online a month ago, their wife in conversations, jeebus, and also who the f lets someone come and eat dinner at their house after they've only met them for a month with their child there? Yeah, I'm judging you, lady. I'm judging you. Guess I know you're dead. I know you're dead. Okay, don't haunt me. Don't haunt me, random Asian lady. Don't haunt me, please. I get it. Anyway, so Tan had pled guilty, sorry, not guilty, to the charge of allegedly he murdered Zhang about 6 p.m. on February 2nd of 2021 after an argument about seeing her with somebody else. She was subjected to what the evidence showed is a sustained, deliberate, sharp force assault, including at least one stab to the area of her heart. So he literally stabbed her in the heart, guys. She was stabbed in the heart and they were too late. <sighs> and after murdering his girlfriend of a month, he then allegedly dumped her body into a wheelie bin and watched as the garbage truck took her away. He said the lies Tan allegedly told, this is the prosecutor, and the lengths to the cover-up of her body and his involvement in it and his attempt to flee were all pieces of the puzzle from which a clear picture has emerged. It's alleged that Tan asked a friend to come to Zhang's Epping home in Melbourne on the night of her death and told him that they had argued and fought and he killed her accidentally before cleaning up and putting her body into a laundry cupboard. Genius. He allegedly moved her body into a wheelie bin and then drove to Heidenberg West and placed the bin and others out for collection. The following morning, after driving Zhang's son to school, he allegedly returned and watched the garbage truck empty the bin before returning to Zhang's home. Tan allegedly then called her close friends to tell her that she'd been missing, and the two, along with Zhang's former husband then reported her missing to the police. In a statement to officers, Tan said that Zhang had gone 
out in her pyjamas and slippers taking her mobile phone and nothing else a little after 6pm. No, what a twat muffin. Anyway, Zhang's body was discovered by police during a search of a landfill in Warrant um, in June of 2021 after the friend had come forward. Uh, his barrister, Greg Human, said Tan duped the prosecution's case. He maintains that Miss Zhang left her home at 6 pm and did not return. He tried to find her, he said. He denied putting Tan's body. Um, sorry, Tan denied that he put Zhang's body in a bin and taken it to Heidenberg West, you know, even though they found her at a tip. So how did she get there, Zhang? Hmm? Hmm? Quinces? I'm um, sorry, Tan? Tan was arrested and released by police after being interviewed on February 6, 2021. He later uh, made arguments to, arrangements, arguments, probably both, to meet um, officers at his home, but never showed up. Good job. Tan was arrested in Melbourne Airport on February 10th as he tried to flee. Um, and the Supreme cri- uh, Trial before Justice Maddie Fox is expected to run for about four weeks. So I'm going to be reporting on this case as it comes along. I'm hopefully giving you guys regular updates on, you know, what has been happening with this douchebag of a douchebag. So, yeah, guys. He murdered her and then had the audacity, the audacity to drop her child off at school and watch as he disposed of her mother, his mother's body, then got the ex-husband um, in on it and said that she was missing and that he needed help finding her. And, yeah. People be crazy, y'all. People be crazy. I am so paranoid and I hope my husband never leaves me because then I will be all alone because there's no way on God's green earth I would let anyone into my life. (laughs) Honestly. (laughs) Honestly. People are so crazy. So crazy. I'd rather be alone. I'd rather be alone than risk it. I mean, I have a bob. And people can get bobs. Just saying. Bobs are battery operated boyfriends, guys. Just saying. I had a bob before I had my husband. <laughs> yep, that's some information that you didn't need to know and no way for me to delete it. So, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Picture that next time you're eating Vegemite and toast. <laughs> <laughs> Inappropriate banter. Alrighty. Okie dokie, Aunt Trokey. Thank you for your time today. And I apologize in advance for that last bit of hysterical weirdness. Uh, I've had a total of four hours sleep. Welcome to insomnia. And last night apparently was a flower moon. So, uh, which is just a moon in May that the, um, some people in my heritage, a pagan heritage, believes that, uh, you know, if you pray to the flower god, then you will have a good harvest. So, um, but it is a time of year where a lot of flowers are planted and only grow in the next uh, four to 12 weeks. So, not that I know anything about flowers. I'm a terrible botanist. I just <laughs> I look, I do not have a green thumb. I am where plants go to die. Those poor plants. Okay, so like I said, thank you so much for supporting my page. And turns out this video is much longer than I thought it was going to be. So that is awesome. And I shall see you guys a little bit later. I will be uploading my crochet along today um, with a new video over on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, please come find me. You'll find me at Crochet and Crime with Hazy Baby. Or you can just find me with Hazy, H-A-Z-I-E, Baby. And you'll find me. I'm there. I'm the ginger one. Uh Uh-huh. You're here. Sorry, now I'm just wasting time because I'm trying to get to this corner before the end of the day. So you can be satisfied. And so I can be satisfied that we made it. But I just realized that it's 9.32 and I'm due at work at 10 o'clock. So I'm just going to have to put this down. All right. Thank you so much for your time today, guys. And I shall see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful inspiring day. Bye.
拜。